All right, let's go to the next shape. The next shape is a cylinder, okay? W on a keyboard to move this out of the way. Now, let's go into why I would make a cylinder. Uh, first off, again, if I hit tab, you can see that this ends in an extraordinary vertice. It's got a polar cap on it. It's not very useful when it comes to box modeling. Tab again. Let's uh, hit mesh cube. Okay, so how do I turn this into this? All right, I have to show you a new command. So let's go into edit mode. Let's off click on anything and let's hit control R. Okay. After you let go, control R basically has this little purple line that wants to ask where you want to cut this thing. So if I click and hold drag up to the top, I get this. Again, let's practice this. Control R, click drag. It's that easy. Control R, click. This time I'm not going to drag. I can drag it after the fact if I wanted to. But not all meshes are square, so this might be destructive to the mesh. Off click on anything. How do I get rid of that? Again, your basic training states that if you hold Shift and Alt, you can click on it. X on the keyboard will allow you to delete edge loops. Okay. In order to produce this shape, I also have to show you another command. Let's go into face. This is counter to the edge loop. This is an this is an edge loop across an edge ring. The other type of edge loop is an edge loop on a face. Okay, so there's kind of technically two different kind of variations of edge loops face edge loops and edge ring edge loops. Okay, highlight one face. This is commonly known as an extrude. So control E, right click, R on the keyboard, and I can go like this. Now I grab the center circle here in order to do that. Let's do that at the bottom just to um, for practice. Again, highlight it, control E, right click, scale. All right, so you have effectively made a cylinder. Yeah, so it doesn't look like a cylinder, right? So hit tab and let's add a modifier to it, multi res and let's hit subdivide. There we go, cylinder out of a box. Let's apply that. Now I might not need all this geometry, so if I wanted to reduce the geometry to count a little bit, I can go into edge, hold shift and alt, X, edge loops. And I don't know if that's going to affect many edge loops. Let me try this. Yeah, you have to do one edge loop at a time, unfortunately. Well, that's kind of stupid. Oh well. Wow, that could take all day. So that's how you can reduce geometry down. Again, I'm kind of spoiled in the fact that, yeah, you could do that in other programs. And I think there's another place we can do this under mesh edges. Nope. 
let's try to delete on here. Nope. So one edge at a time, going all the way around. And this is a good way to reduce your geometry down to the point where it's usable and still has the shape. There we go, cylinder. All right, now that we have that basic shape out of the way, let's go on to the next video. And I kind of want to keep it this way. I know it's, it's kind of a pain switching from video to video to video, but trust me, when it comes down to a classroom application, that is a really nice thing to do. Let's say I wanted to do a couple shapes in a day and have students practice with those, I could. So that's why I kind of break up my videos that way. I know, again, it's, it's kind of a pain on YouTube, but uh, when I use these videos via a classroom with you know 25 odd students, uh, sometimes I can just give them a couple videos and say, hey, these are two basic shapes I want you to produce today in Blender. So that's why I do this. All right, that being said, Let's move on to the next video.